How many of you have ever door knocked? Alright, how many of you have ever taken a listen and go to door knocking? Alright, very good. Anybody ever taken a listening at the door while you were door knocking? Okay, so it can be done. It can be done. It can be done by you, me, and the rest of us. So what is the proper dress code for door knocking? What's our strategy for door knocking? Uh, I think the proper dress code is uh, some type of a comfortable dress code. Uh, business casual, uh, a golf shirt, like James has. Show us your golf shirt, James. It's got the uh, company logo. Show, show the, the camera money. right there. Show the camera. There's a camera right there. See that? There? Okay. Smile, wave the camera, point to the logo. Yeah, yeah. Point to your logo. <coughs> yeah, one of my uh, members over the course uh, made me some shirts. And I gave a few no's also. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's just an opportunity, even if you're out walking around or shopping, you never know who's going to see it and spark a conversation with you. So. Right. So uh, I would suggest that you You sell them? Yes. Yes, we can order them. How much? Yes. They're about 20 to 25 bucks each, just depending on the material. And it's blue? Yeah, you can order There's different a lot of different colors. colors. Different colors. Yeah. Red, white, white, white green. I have a white one and a green one. All right, so let's talk about proper dress code for door knocking. The proper <coughs> dress code is you want to be comfortable yeah, with comfortable shoes for sure. All right, so ladies, uh, try not to go out there with your high heels and guys, try not to wear your platform, okay? All right, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, I've gone downtown a lot and watched ladies who were in business uh, attire and they, when they go out for lunch, what do they wear? They wear their tennis shoes. So it's okay to have nice dress top, you know, dress pants. And uh, in the summertime, when it's like a, you know, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, a shirt, you know, without a collar or without a tie would be appropriate. All right. You want to be business-like. You don't want to go in there with your, you know, holes in your jeans, that kind of thing. That's a new style, but that's not really a business style. Okay. All right, so I know some of you paid two hundred dollars for those jeans to have holes in, but that's not the proper attire for door knocking. So when to door knock? Uh, let me just kind of go around the room, and take a quick survey. When should you door knock, uh, Deborah? Uh, I don't know when I should, but I, when I have, it's been like around between two to four. Mm -hmm. In the evening, I've done it in the mornings between like nine and eleven. Okay. Uh, Virgil. Well, you want to catch people when they're home, so Saturday is usually a good day. Mm -hmm. And I think from what I read in uh, Calvin's book, he recommended the afternoon because people are out running around in the morning. So, right. you have any ideas? We went in the evening. In the evenings. Okay. Any time after 11 a.m. Any time after 11 a.m. Okay. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. Yeah, they're all good times to door knock. Uh, if you go on the weekends, for example, on Saturday mornings, uh, a lot of people are at home, you know, chilling out, you know, drinking their coffee, their tea, cleaning up around the garage, doing things like that. So it's a good time in the morning on Saturdays, for example. I would say any time after, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays, a lot of folks are around. They're running, they're in their chores. Um, you know, some people door knock on Sundays, but some people get irritated when you door knock on Sunday, depending on their. their some people get irritated if you door knock on Saturday, depending on their persuasion. <laughs> and I had that happen once. New time, new time. It's the Sabbath. Go away. <laughs> you just move on to the, to the next one. By the, by the time of day, people are. You know, it used to be that you door knock when people are home, but people are home a lot. A lot of people work out of their homes. So I would not say, you know, don't go or not uh, in the morning because no one's home. Because there are a lot of people working out of their homes. Have you noticed that? A lot of you work out of your homes, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say door knocking, pretty much any time is a good time to door knock. Uh, but you try to do it in an area where I, you want to have a purpose for your door knocking. So um, when to door knock, I say pretty much any time is a good time to door knock. And a lot of people sit around making reasons why they should not door knock right now because it doesn't feel right. Uh, during the summer times, it's good to door knock. Oh, that's much better, isn't it? Wow, what happened? Did that get clear for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 thank you, Lord. <laughs> that was. 
So, proper time to door knock is pretty much any time because people work out of their homes a lot. So I want to encourage you to, to do that, to set a time and just go for it, and just door knock, okay? Good morning, Lily. Okay, so um, if you door knock uh, during the, the weekday, uh, you're, there's a chance you'll get somebody there. If you door knock on the weekend, there's a chance you'll get someone there. In the summertime, it's, you know, you have lots of hours to door knock. You can door knock up until about 8 o'clock at night because uh, it gets dark 7.30, 7.45 at night. So you can door knock pretty late. But once we hit the winter time, your door knocking time is starting over around 4.30 because it gets dark pretty early, right? So this is a prime time to door knock now from the spring until uh, they change the time. So I would say make a time to door knock. You try not to do it in the heat of the day. But I'll tell you what, I've door knocked in the heat of the day and I walked up to the door perspiring all over and guess what, people feel sorry for me. Oh, can I get you a drink of water? Do you want to come inside for an iced tea? So, you know, these are different things that you can do to get people to feel good about you or sympathetic toward what you're trying to do. So, I would say, think about when you want to door knock. What to say scripts. All right, good morning. Good morning. All right, so what do you, what do you say uh, when you door knock? What can you say? Hey, anybody have an idea what to say? Please sit down because you're creating more activity by waiting around. Thank Everybody you. know you're here, you're cute. Okay, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, Aida. Aida. Good morning. Welcome, Aida. Good to see you, as always. All right, good morning. All right, so uh, what to say when the door knock? Uh, anybody have any clue about what to say? Introduce yourself, let them know you're a real estate agent working in the area. Mm -hmm. All right. You're an expert in the area. All right. Just try to spark conversation. Okay, anybody else? Hi, Lily. I can quote. Yes. Fran. Okay. Fran's knocking door method was real simple. Do you know of anybody who wants to sell their home? <laughs> One question, period, and a story. That's, that's all it was for Fran. That's pretty straight work. Right. Yes, I did. Yeah, I think sometimes it depends also the purpose of when you go door knocking. Mm -hmm. um, I've done uh, uh, NODs, mm -hmm. so I usually take a brochure, mm -hmm. yeah, a brochure or something with me and basically um, let the homeowners, well actually I ask to speak with the homeowners to make sure I'm talking to the right person. And then I just basically let them know that, you know, I'm aware that the bank has sent them a notice in default mm -hmm. and you have to contact the bank when it's been done. You know, and that generally starts the conversation. All right, anyone else? What to say? So I use door knocking for uh, several different things. I door knock when I want to announce my open house that is coming up. I door knock, I have a flyer that I prepare with my information on it. With basic property information on it, but I don't have all the information about the property on it because I want to make sure that they contact me for the rest. So I may have the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, square footage, but I may not have the price. Or I may have the price, but not the number of bedrooms. I'm going to leave something out because I want them to reach back out to me when I'm door knocking. I want to always leave something. So having a business card or, or making a little brochure about a property that just came on the market, and maybe it's not even your listing. Maybe someone else is listening, but you can go online to the MLS, you can print up that flyer, right? The flyer, there's a flyer that you can print up from every property on the MLS, right? And it has your branding information on it, doesn't it? And so you can door knock saying, hey, by the way, there's a house that just came on the market in your neighborhood. And they're saying, oh, really, how much is it? And so then you can strike up a conversation. So I door knock when I want to announce an open house. Uh, sometimes I just do random door knocking. And so here's one of the techniques I use when I do random door knocking. What I try to do is I try to pick a busy street. Why a busy street? Because the houses turn over faster. The houses turn over faster on a busy street building. We talked about that before, right? Mm -hmm. So a busy street like Wilbur, Lassen, Plummer. You see the boulevard north of Devonshire, it's kind of a busy street. So I pick a busy street because homes turn over more frequently on busy streets than they do on home, homes that are located in cul-de-sacs and more quiet streets. The other great thing about door knocking on a busy street is that when I get that listing, I have really good exposure 
Because my sign is up there, right? It's more visible. So that's a great thing about door knocking on busy streets. So I do random door knocking. And I'll tell you about what my script is, what I say, but I'm telling you the reasons that I door knock and the purpose. So you need to have a purpose behind your door knocking. When I have a listing that just came on the market, I all door knock that area to let people know, by the way, I just have a new property that just came on the market. I have a property that's going to be coming on the market after I've already signed the contract. And I just want to let you know about it. And I'll ask the question that Fran Wilson used to ask, which is, who do you know that may be thinking about selling their home? I don't ask them, are you thinking about selling your home? Because most of them will say no. So I put it on their neighbor. I said, who do you know that's thinking about selling your home? And then they'll say, well, I don't know anybody. Oh, OK. Uh, do you know anybody that's thinking about buying a home in this area? I don't know. How about you? No. So then you just move on. It's a numbers game. So you just move on to the next door. So there should be a purpose behind your door knocking. You can do random door knocking. I've been much more effective with random door knocking on busy streets for me. All right, so I can door knock when I have a listing. I also door knock when I have a sale that just occurred. By the way, I, we just sold, let's say um, William just sold a uh, white. Uh, uh, white oak, right? William just sold. And so William can go by there and say, by the way, uh, I'm William Kuzman, no Wilson and Associates. We just sold the property located at 10126 White Oak Avenue. And they're going to, oh, really? How much did it go for? And then we can talk about that. And then it leads on to other conversations, okay? Are you taking notes? Thank you. All right. So door knocking has, should have a purpose behind it. It shouldn't be just out there door knocking. It's for a purpose. Maybe you want to drum up a listing in the area because you want, that's your farm area. Now, if you're door knocking in a farm area, you need to do more research. You need to do some homework if you're door knocking in a farm area. Right, William? Right. All right. So if I, if I have a, a farm, let's say I pick an area that has 2,000 homes, and that's a good-sized farm. 2,000 homes. You can probably <coughs> door knock that farm in about a month. You can door knock everybody in that neighborhood in about a month, but you've got to be pretty aggressive in your door knocking, right? And the purpose of door knocking is to go there and let me tell you what I'm going to say. Let's say it's my, how many of you have a, a geographic farm? Any cuts in your hands? You do, you do. All right, the rest of you don't like having regular money, right? Because if you have a geographic farm, it will be a gold mine to you, I tell you. It's, you don't have to be the, the most productive agent, but you will become a productive agent by door knocking in a farm area. So I pick a geographic area uh, for my farm, and then I'm going to have a purpose. I'm going to get a farm package from the title company, right? In the farm package, I'll ask for all the homes that are located in that community that I identified as my farm. And then I ask them to subset it. I'll ask them to give me the list of those that are absentee owners, right? So I want to segregate my farm into those that are living there and those who are renters absentee owners typically tells me that the folks are renting the place out or it's just vacant, right? So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to segregate my farm into absentee and to those who are living in that home, all right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have for every street that I walk on, and typically what I do is I walk down one side of the street, and then I turn around and I walk down the other side of the street. I don't zigzag and crisscross around the street. I try to make it as simple as I possibly can to be as efficient as I can with the use of my time and my energy, right? So I'm going to walk down one side of the street, I'm going to hit all those homes, and I'm going to get to the door and here's what I'm going to say. So uh, if it's a house in a neighborhood like we're going to door knock today, right here in this neighborhood here, do you all know we're going to door knock today? No. Was that in the text? No. <laughs> and then that was showing up. <laughs> so we're going to do it today. And we're going to just go to the house. And what I typically do is I walk up to the door. I ring the doorbell. And about 40% of the home's doorbells don't work. You notice that? <laughs> they don't work. So then I'm going to, and then I'm going to step back. Because I want them to see who I am. So I'm going to knock on that door, and then I'm going to step back. 
If there's a step where I step up, I'm going to step off the step so that they can look down and see who I am. Did you understand what I said? So I'm going to knock on the door and then I'm going to step back. And when they come to the door, I'm going to say, hi, my name is Mel. I'm with Mel Wilson and Associate Realtors. I'm your local realtor in the area. And I'm coming by to see who you know that may be thinking about selling their home. And I would say 99% of the time they're going to say, I don't know anybody. That's what they're going to say. And if I have a property that's on the market in the area, one that we recently sold, I'll tell them about that. By the way, did you know that we recently had a sale in the neighborhood over on Rhea Avenue? And, that, and they'll say, well, how much did it go for? And I'll tell them the information. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knock on that door. I'm going to step back. And when they come to the door, they may not even open the door. They may just be looking through the screen or looking through the peephole. And they may just say, you know, who is it? What do you want? And I'll say, hi, my name is Mel. I'm with Mel Wilson Associate Realtors. We're your local real estate company. And I'm coming by to see who you know that may be thinking about selling their home. Got it? That's not too difficult, is it? It's not, you don't have to remember a lot to get this part right. Right, Emil? Yeah. Yes. OK. All right. I was waiting for you. OK. So this is what we're going to do. It's an easy script. And what I do is, when I, oh, let me get back to, sorry about that. Let's see here. Okay, so what to say? All right, anybody else have anything they say when they do or not that's been affected? I've used several different things. Like? Well, alerting them to the community issue that's okay. going on in right. the geographic farm area that I work in. Okay. All right. So you did a great thing. You know, do you know about the zoning changes proposed for the neighborhood? 99% mm -hmm. of the time the answer is no. Right. And immediately the door is open. Mm -hmm. What changes? Mm -hmm. So you use a community interest because you The other work. one was the neighborhood garage sale. Mm -hmm. Going out and organizing a neighborhood garage sale. Okay. So that's and that's doubly good because people who have garage sales sometimes are people thinking about moving. Yeah. All right, so uh, what to say. It's easy, easy script. Hi, my name is Lillian. I'm with Mel Wilson and Associates, and I'm coming by to find out who do you know that may be thinking about selling their home. Simple. Yes. I just wanted to add to sometimes um, I go out just to give out information to them. The uh, tax assessor's office has those little pamphlets. So that's always good to hand out. Have some I think it's always good to have some type of handout with your contact information on it. Right? You can make your own flyer. I mean, it's so easy now with our computers, with our printers, right? It's really, really simple to do this. You don't need to go out and order some sophisticated thing, but it's nice if you can afford something that's more extravagant and some, something of value. And you want to leave them something of value with them, right? The title company has a lot of door knocking uh, information flyers on it too. Okay, there you go. All right, thank you, James. All right, so how to follow up leads. So after I door knock and I talk to Mrs. Uh, Estrada, and she says, Oh, um, you know, uh, we're thinking about maybe uh, buying another home, you know, in the near future. And so I'll, I'll do a follow-up, you know, oh, when, when would you like to buy your net home? And then she'll tell me, or we're thinking about, you know, moving, or we're thinking about adding on a room, or we're thinking about doing this. I'm going to write down, after I've had my conversation with them, when I, before I get to my next door, I'm going to write down my little note about what Mrs. Strada said, right? And so maybe there's a little dog that's just yapping, <laughs> And you're yapping at you, you know, and you're like trying to act like you're you're not afraid, but you're like, this dog. Would you get that dog? And I said, oh, what's your dog's name? Oh, that's Fido, or that's Ferocious, or that's Bear, or whatever. That's whatever the name of the dog is. Precious. Don't care. Don't, right? <laughs> that's precious, right? <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to do that. You're going to write down that information. Maybe there are a bunch of kids running around. Johnny, what are you doing? Right? Or maybe there's something going on. So you're going to take your note about what happened. And then what you're going to do 
is when you get back to the office or back to your home, if you go home, you're going to have your little note card and you're going to write down, Mrs. Estrada, it was really good meeting you today. Uh, thank you for sharing with me that you're thinking about moving, so I'd love to be able to help you. Let me know if I can help you any time in the future. Right? And you're going to send them out a note card. And I'll tell you something that's really, really powerful. What you need to find out is the local post office that delivers the next day. Like, have you ever noticed anybody ever drop mail off in the mailbox? You notice on the, on the mailbox there's a little thing that says the, the, the pickup for that day? The last pickup. You've noticed that? Well, if you get to find out, that you, if you get to drop that in the mailbox before the last pickup, guess what? It's going to go out in the next day's mail. I used to work for the post office. It's a great place. I met a great woman there who I ended up marrying. Right? So it was a great thing for me. So knowing the post office route delivery times. So if you send that note the same day, it is so impressive. First of all, people are not accustomed to getting handwritten letters. They are not. They usually get bills in the mail or some kind of advertisement, right? And so when they get something and it's not a bill, they're most likely going to open it. And also, if they got it the next day after they talked to you, Virgil, it's going to be so, oh my gosh, how did he do that? How did she do that? So I used to drive all the way over to the post office on the corner of, of Woodley and Sherman Way. Because that's a big sectional center. That's the one that processes a lot of the mail for the region. And they deliver it, you know, if you get it to their drop-off, most likely it's going to be processed and delivered the next uh, business day. Okay, so these are little clever things that you can do to give yourself an edge so that you can stand out over somebody else who is trying to canvas the same area you're trying to canvas. So the follow-up. So let's say uh, Mrs. Estrada said that, oh, you know, we're thinking about moving in a couple of years, my husband. Why a couple of years, Mrs. Estrada? Oh, my husband's going to retire. Oh, okay. And so I may send Mrs. Estrada something every month or so. Maybe I'll send her something about retirement or about maybe uh, something that, an area that she said she was interested in. So I'm just going to stay in touch with Mrs. Estrada, just drip irrigation kind of stuff, just little stuff, right? Information of value. So that's how I follow up. And then I have a little follow up. How many of you use Outlook? All right. Outlook is a great program that you can do reminders. All right, if you don't have Outlook, there's other programs that has reminders on it where you can calendar when you want to be reminded of an activity that you want to follow up on or an event that you want to go to, right? And so it's cool to take notes in your little calendar, right? So that when that pops up, oh, it's Mrs. Estrada, it's time for her to, you know, change her bedding on her, her garden, you know, for her azaleas or whatever, right? Little things like that really helps you out. All right, so follow up. It's critical that you follow up. If you don't, you're just wasting a lot of time. But I tell you, if you follow up with door knocking, you will make money. It is, it is so like in, it works. A lot of agents don't do it anymore. Agents now want to do everything on the emails. They want to do everything in the regular mail. They don't want to door knock. They don't want to have that interaction because they're afraid. They're, they're wishing and hoping, Cynthia, that nobody shows up at that door when they knock. They're hoping nobody's there because they don't want to have to talk. But I will tell you, it's a powerful thing to interact with folks. Okay? All right, so door knocking in your farm. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, if you don't have a farm, I want to suggest that you get one. And here's what you want to do when you're talking about picking a farm. Pick an area that you like. Pick an area that you like. Pick an area that's either close to your work or close to your home. Some place that you're going to get to easily. Right? Pick an area that has relatively smooth or slow, I guess, uh, flat area, flat surface to walk. Because if you find areas that have steep hills, you're going to be really tired door knocking. Pick an area that doesn't have these giant lots in between homes so you can get more homes. Pick an area that turns over more. How do you know? Well, you run it on the MLS. You find out in the neighborhood. You can do it by a map code and all these other kinds of functions. And you can find out how fast properties are turning over there. Okay? All right. Taking a listing at the door. How do you take a listing at the door? I've done it before. Have you? 
Okay, all right. I've taken lessons at the door. Here's, I was a Boy Scout as a child, okay? And Boy Scouts, they have a motto. It's called, be prepared. Always be prepared. And so I come, when I door knock, I already have comparables of the area. I already have my listing agreement. It's just not filled out, but I have one there. I have my agency disclosure. Those are the two main things that I need to take that listing at the door. I typically have a clipboard, so if I need to write on something and I don't have to fumble around and find a hard surface, I have a clipboard. I usually have a pen, sometimes two pens, because I need to make sure that they have something to write with too. Okay? I have comparables of what, what's going on in the neighborhood. And so those are the basic things that I have when I'm door knocking. I am ready to take a listing that day. I'm just hoping that I get in a position where someone's going to say, yeah, I'm thinking about moving. You know, I, I door knock so many times that when I knock on the door, I'm expecting them to say no. I'm expecting them to tell me, leave me alone. I'm expecting them to give me a negative response. And I, I'm so ingrained expecting that, that when they say, I'm thinking about moving, I want to keep talking about the things that, you know, I say, you thinking about moving? Yes, I'm thinking about moving. So what do you say? What do you say if they say they're thinking about moving? When? I would say that's a good question, a when question. What's another good question? Where? That's a good question. That's a good good question. What's another good one? Are you thinking about No, they're saying they're thinking about moving. Yeah, well, that's, 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 renting. that's true. That's true. Very good. I'll ask why. Why are you thinking about moving? You got this beautiful home. Oh, you know what? This, this is my Uncle Joe's house. I don't own this house. We want to buy another house, right? Or, you know, I, you know, I, I don't like that neighbor next door. They're just a pest. You know, ever since they moved into the neighborhood, it went down. Or, you know, I'm tired of all this traffic around here. There's too much traffic. I want to get away from California. I hate the taxes. Oh, these politicians are all crooks. I want to get away from them. They have all kinds of reasons that they're thinking about moving. So when they say they're thinking about moving, I'm going to ask a follow-up question, William. Really. Why are you thinking about moving? When are you thinking about moving? Where are you thinking about relocating to? And how can I help you? Right? So this is how you prepare to take a listing at the door. Um, so how do you overcome your fears for door knocking, Cynthia? Uh, do it. <laughs> Just do it. Huh? Nike girl. Huh? <laughs> How many of you think you have fears for door knocking? Can I see your hand? Will you? Okay. Okay. Now you, you don't door knock. I don't door knock. Okay. How about you? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Fears? Okay. Well, here's how I overcome the fears. Uh, and we all have our own fears. One of the things I think about is the odds are they're going to say no. And so when they say no, I'm not dejected. I don't feel personal. I don't feel like it's a personal attack on me. It's just a numbers game. And I found that if I door knock a hundred doors, I'm going to get at least one, maybe two good leads. That's what I found. If I door knock a hundred doors, and this is just random door knocking. If I am more strategic at my door knocking, my numbers get better. But a random door knock, maybe your farm area, or maybe just going down that busy street. Right? But I find that, you know, I'm most likely going to get a no. And so if I say, hi, my name is... Is that me? No, oh, that's me. Oh, okay. uh, so I may say, uh, hi, my name is Nancy. I'm with uh, Mel Wilson and Associates. And I'm uh, a realtor. And I come to your area trying to find out who you know that may be thinking about selling your home. And she's going to say, oh. You're so cute. <laughs> right? That's cute. But then you're going to go on to your next dialogue, right? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to have your dialogue about what you want to get from them, right? So overcoming your fears. In your mind, already know that the answer is most likely going to be no. So don't take it personal. It's not about you. It's just that they're not ready. If somebody walked up to your house, and they say, uh, Mrs. Kuzman, Mrs. Kuzman, uh, I'm a realtor, and I'm with XYZ Company, and I'm just coming by 
wondering, you know, who do you know that may be thinking about selling their home? I don't know anyone. How about you, Mrs. Guzman? No. My husband's a realtor. Mm, that's what she says. Right? My <laughs> husband's a realtor. And we're going to listen with him, right? Or, no, I don't want to sell my house. And I've had people say things like, I'm going to live here until I die. They're going to have to drag me from here. Have you heard people say that? Yes. yes. I have. I've heard people say that. And they say, oh, can I say something like, can I talk to your estate attorney? Can I talk to your heirs? Who are they? Because <laughs> we don't. You put me in your will as the designated <laughs> listing agent. <laughs> right. All right. So you overcome your fears by setting yourself up for success and realizing that their chances are they're going to say no. And it's just a numbers game. You want to get to as many doors as you possibly can get to. So set aside a designated time and a designated amount of time that you want to do your door knocking. And just stick to it. And don't feel rejected when they say no. Some people say no very harshly. Some people say no very nicely. Some people will not say no, but they won't say yes. Right? I, know, I have a lot of folks who I know who are uh, Chinese. And it's rare that I have a Chinese customer that says no. They just don't say yes. They don't say no, but they just don't say yes. So just don't take it personal. Just realize, Aida, that it's a numbers game. Now that you've hit, you know, 30 doors, you're getting closer to that 100th door, and you're going to get a lead or two. And occasionally, you'll get a lead right early on. And then you won't get any more leads for the remainder of your door knocking. So it's just a numbers game. But I'll tell you something, if you door knock effectively, you will get business out of door knocking. It doesn't cost you anything. And the great thing about it is it, it's good exercise. It's good aerobics, right? And that's what I want you to do. And this is a great time of the year to do it. So door knocking in random areas, we talked about that. We talked about how to prepare for door knocking. So let's, let's go through some role playing. Who's ready? William's ready. Do you want to be the owner or do you want to be the realtor? Realtor. Who said that? You're going to be the owner. No, he wants to be the realtor. You're going to be the owner? So she'll be the owner. You're going to be the owner. Yeah, because you volunteered me. You got to volunteer yourself. All right. William, you don't go not sitting down. Okay. All right, so there you are. Let's see. This will make a good door. Hi. Uh, Did you open the door? Or are you talking through the door? Oh, I forgot. Uh, okay. Good morning. May I help you? Uh, yes. My name is William Kuzman. I work for Mel Wilson and Associates, and I'm here to ask you today if you know anyone who might be wanting to sell their home. Um, not really. I think maybe the one across the street mentioned something, but I'm not very sure. Oh, really? Which one? Just across the street on the right side. Oh, that one over there? What's their name? I think it's Peter. Oh, ah, okay. and do you know why he's moving? Uh, no, but you can talk, no? Well, you thank go you. And ask them. Great, thank you so much. Is there anything I can do to help you? No, we're not planning to move at all. So I'll let my kids take care of that. Okay, well, it was nice to meet you. Well, Here's my business card in case you ever need me. Have a great day. Thank you. Very good. I'll for Thank Will. All right. That's the door. I don't want to sit on the door. Okay. Deborah, are you ready? You've done door knocking before. Are you going to be the agent or are you going to be the, the uh, owner? Okay, she's the agent. <laughs> oh, Virgil, why don't you be the owner? You're a good owner. All right, there you go. Go ahead. Try Virgil. He's a tough guy, but... Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we can just say whatever. What is the script? What do, what do we do when we're doing that? Anybody want to remind her? Well, we have a purpose. That's what I'm asking you. Can I... Use my own purpose? Yep. Tell us what your purpose is. I am knocking in on these. Okay. So Notice the defaults. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, good afternoon, sir. How are you? Okay. Good. My name is Deborah Keith, and I'm with Mel Wilson and Associates. 
And what's your name, sir? Virgil. Virgil. Well, Virgil, um, and you own the home, correct? I do. Okay, I noticed that you have a notice of default. Okay. Have you talked with your bank? No, I already talked to my lawyer. You talked to your lawyer? Try to save my house. Oh, okay. So are you, you planning to, to do a modification or are you no, filing a bankrupt deal? Just, no, I have. I just talked to my lawyer. Try to resolve all the problems I can stay. Okay, and how's your lawyer helping you? Good. So it's the modification is coming along okay? Not, not alone, no. It's uh, something else. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, do you know anyone, you have any friends or family who might be going through the same experience as you? No, really. I don't, I don't know anybody. Okay. Well, let me give you my business card in case you do come across anyone. I'm more than happy to help them. It's a service that I provide to uh, homeowners. I will. Thank you. Thank you. I'll buy for that one. Now Deborah's door knocking with a purpose, and her purpose is she's got a list of property owners who are in default. They have a notice of default, which means that their the foreclosure process has started. Now one of the things that I would say just as a side suggestion is that she already knows who the person's name is, but she's trying to identify is that the right person because she has a list which has the name of the property owner. But it may not be the property owner that she's engaging with at the door, right? So I would say, hi, uh, my name is Deborah with Mel Wilson and Associate Realtors, and I'm calling because I have a list of all homeowners who are having a little difficulty making their payments. Are you Mrs. Are you Mr. Tan? And then he'll say, no, that's my dad. <laughs> uh, no, that's my son. See, that's what I would do. I would just kind of, and, and a notice of default is a toughie because some people are very angry. When you knock on a door that somebody has a notice of default, they're mad already at the bank. They're mad that their husband didn't give them the money to make the payment after they got the divorce. Or they're mad for whatever reason. They're angry. So, you know, you have to be very delicate with them, right? Because you want to help them, but they may just see you as a person who's a predator trying to take advantage of them. Because they're mad at the world. So sometimes you have to just be... You know, when they're defensive, like he was, he didn't want to give a lot of information up, did he? And that's that's not uncommon. A lot of people are like, well, how did you find out? You know, who do you know? Who are you? You know, people get really angry with him. You heard that kind of reaction? Yeah. yeah. So, it's a good source of people who really need help. Okay, who's next? Hi, There's only two left of you to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Yes. Yeah, what is that? Door knocking. Huh? The door knocking. Door knocking. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you the agent or are you the owner? I'll be the the owner. You're the owner. I know you be the agent. I'll be the agent. Whatever. Yeah. But you're the owner or the agent. I'll be either one. Okay. What are you gonna be? <laughs> the owner. <laughs> She's a bystander. Bystander. <laughs> you doing? Oh, I know. <laughs> okay. She's the agent. Okay. All right, so let's kind of recap, uh, review again what you, you're doing. You have to let us know the purpose. Are you randomly door knocking? Are you door knocking your farm? Are you door knocking for a purpose uh, to announce an open house? Are you door knocking for whatever reason? As she had a purpose, door knocking for it, uh, a notice of defaults. So you're going to get up to the door, you're going to knock, you're going to ring the bell, and you're going to step back. Right? So they can see you. Because people are threatened sometimes when people come to their door. It's like, I didn't invite you. Why are you here at my door? Right? And so you're gonna and you're gonna say hi, you're gonna tell them your name and who you work with, and then you're gonna go into your dialogue. Are you ready? Alright. Oh. Go for it. Stand by you. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's go. We know you can do it. <laughs> Knock on the door or ring the bell. And you're gonna do what? Whoa. Oh, he's looking right. through the window. Who is it? <laughs> Hello, sir. My name is. Good morning. My name is Aida. I work for Mel Wilson and Associates. Um, this morning, I was uh, going through the neighborhood, uh, giving some flyers regarding the recent sales um, in this neighborhood, and I also would like to give you more information um, about the neighborhood, um, like. Um, the neighborhood uh, garage sale. Mm -hmm. um, do you know anybody who's interested in selling their property? I don't know anybody at this time. Well, thank you, sir, for your time. Let me give you my information and some comparables if you're 
maybe thinking in the future of selling or you know anybody who wants to sell. Okay, sure. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, we'll give you points for the big credit. All right, now too many words. You don't need all those words. You just you, you, you want to keep it as simple as possible. Hi, my name is Aida. I am with Mel Wilson and Associates. And you want to let them know what that is. It may be a law firm, could be an accounting firm. I'm a realtor, right? I'm a real estate company. I'm your real estate consultant, right? So you want to let them know who you are and what your purpose is. Because Mel Wilson and Associates could be anybody, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're going to do that. And then you're going to say, hi, my name is Aida. What is your name? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you're going to say, hi, I'm just going through your neighborhood, I'm trying to find out who do you know that may be thinking about selling their home. It just gets right to it. You can add, I want to give you this, I want to give you that, but your purpose really is to do what? Good you want to find out if they're a good need or not. Do you know anyone that is thinking about selling their home? Or who do you know? That may, if you say, do you know, usually you'll get a nobody. But if you say, who do you know, you usually get a better response if you say who. But either way, that's what you're there for. Okay? The flyers, the comparables, those are all good things to give. And so I give those things out. I may say, do you know uh, homes are going up in the neighborhood? Home values are going up. Did you know that? They may ask, well, how much? And then they may ask, well, how much do you think my house is worth? Well, say, I don't know. May I come inside and go around? <laughs> That's what I would say. That's what I would say. And take a photo of each room. Get ready for the listing. <laughs> All right. Same way. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Bill's going to be the agent, and Lillian. Uh, uh, no, Cynthia no, is going to be the homeowner. No, Cynthia is going to be the homeowner. All right, Cynthia. I will be the resident. You'll be the resident? Yeah. Okay, Lily, come on. No, you no, you said her. Oh, you go. We'll get to her next. Go ahead. Cynthia, you're the agent. Come knock on Emil's door. Let me go turn this air on because it feels close. <laughs> Cynthia, go ahead, Cynthia. 